Now let's talk about watershed approach. So in order to manage the watershed and the resources within the watershed, uh, there are different strategies, there are different approaches which are generally adopted. Uh, so before we discuss about uh, these different watershed management approaches, uh, let's first talk about what is watershed management uh, and why it is necessary. So, watershed management is the comprehensive planning and implementation of practices and different policies uh, to sustainably uh, uh, to sustainably manage and protect the resources within the watershed. Uh, we have already discussed about uh, the watershed and it is generally uh, it is basically an area uh, of a land where all uh, the water which uh, falls uh, through precipitation and drains into uh, uh, and eventually flows through a single common point of outlet <coughs> uh, for example rivers or oceans uh, so watershed management involves the coordination of various activities that uh, will address the issues related to the uh, various deterioration and uh, deterioration of various resources uh, like water quality, water quantity or the overall health of ecosystem uh, uh, within the specific watershed. Now how this these resources uh, uh, got deteriorated? So there are various reasons uh, that makes the watershed management essential. So, uh, for example, water quality uh, within a watershed, if uh, there are some uh, some activities which are going on like industrial activities or uh, uh, unmanaged agriculture activities, then the uh, water resources like surface and ground water resources uh, get polluted. <coughs> so, uh, whatever the what, what, whatever the earlier quality of water is now been changed. So, basically we need some strategies, we need some action plans uh, to once again restore the water quality and that is why uh, it requires a management uh, in a particular watershed. So, here comes uh, the concept of watershed management. Similarly, uh, uh, in, the, in the context of flood controls. So, proper watershed management can help or uh, mitigate uh, the impact of floods by controlling uh, the flow of water and reducing the risk of uh, uh, livelihood uh, settlements as well as uh, other resources uh, like soil erosion etc. So, this involves the implementation of measures such as uh, afforest, afforestation, then uh, controlling uh, uh, controlling the soil erosion, then uh, adopting some di different agriculture practices like uh, contour plugging uh, and construction of different uh, structures uh, to control the flow of water. Uh, so, all this will become the part of watershed management. <coughs> Then uh, another example will be the sustainable uh, water supply. So, uh, watershed management is crucial for ensuring a sustainable and reliable quantity of uh, uh, sustainable quantity as well as a reliable quality of water supply for different uses like industrial purpose or agriculture purpose and most important for drinking purpose. Uh, so, proper management helps to maintain the water availability as well as the quality. So, uh, considering all uh, these aspects of uh, watershed management, uh, these are basically some strategies depending on uh, what sources we are we are uh, uh, going to manage within the watershed uh, and <coughs> what how the issues have been evolved, uh, how what are the issues the particular watershed is facing uh, depending on that uh, strategies can be developed. Uh, so, there are different approaches to uh, manage these resources, manage the watersheds. Uh, so, we will now see uh, discuss about these watershed uh, approaches.
So generally, the uh, basically the watershed approaches are categorized uh, uh, in, two, uh, in two different uh, categories. Uh, first one is integrated approach, and another one is conglomerate uh, conglomerate uh, approach. So in integrated approach, so generally, so now for example, a, a, in a particular region, um, uh, a river basin, uh, a river is getting polluted because of some uh, human activities like. Uh, uh, like urbanization or expansion of industrial area, uh, industrial activities, uh, the water bodies and uh, especially the river water is getting polluted. So now, uh, in integrated approach, uh, generally uh, we do not uh, look after a resource in isolation. It is basically a holistic approach where we will consider all resources within the watershed. So, instead of look, looking at only one issue or only one resource as a water, all other resources such as land, uh, vegetation uh, or forest, uh, soil and water. So, all these will be uh, considered for uh, management practices or management approach. So, this is basically the concept of uh, integrated uh, uh, approach for watershed management. So, integration of all the basic resources such as land, vegetation and water with uh, different technologies. Uh, uh, this is for better development of the resources uh, and to sustainably meet the basic demands uh, of uh, the people who are residing within the watershed. So, integration of water and uh, uh, land management uh, and uh, by con considering all the resources, restoring all uh, the resources, or considering the issues of different resources, then uh, uh, within this approach, we uh, will try to restore the resources, considering the integration of all the resources. So, uh, basically the focus is on integration, integrated resource management. Now, uh, in another approach, uh, the basic focus will be a people driven focus. So, um, uh, along with the resources, the other, another factor important factor is the stakeholders who are actually utilizing those resources for their livelihood purpose or for different uh, purpose like um, for uh, if there is a vegetation or if there is a soil which is uh, going to be used for agriculture purpose, if there is a water then it will it is going to be used for irrigation as well as for drinking purpose. So, the, there are different stakeholders uh, which will uh, which plays important role within that watershed. So, uh, the, the participation of those stakeholders, so people's participation and their cooperative actions are considered important. Uh, uh, at the same time, uh, the government agencies or government officials who plays also very key role uh, in managing the resources and uh, ultimately the watershed. Uh, so, uh, cooperation of uh, cooperative actions amongst the public, uh, uh, the people who are actually you going to use the resources and uh, the government officials and agencies who are going to manage the resources uh, as well as the policy makers. So, uh, a cooperative action among these all uh, members uh, uh, is one of the approach for uh, watershed management. So, because of this, uh, in, in this approach, uh, it is expected to enhance the knowledge and capacity of uh, the stakeholders that will help to take the decisions related to uh, manage the natural resources. So, for the success of watershed management, um, uh, timely suggestions and assistance uh, to the farmers or uh, to the people uh, as well as to the uh, policy makers uh, is essential. So, that is why this approach is uh, very important. Uh, now, considering these watershed uh, management approaches, now we will see uh, different and important principles of watershed.